Can one run 5W30 in their 0W20 required 3.0 Duramax diesel? Now, technically you should be following your oil cap and what your oil cap says, your owner's manual says, you should follow that to the T. However, if one is going to do a switch to a 5W30, oil analysis should be done. That way you can see if there's an improvement, if you're hurting or if you're helping. And we did just that. What I did prior to running this 5W30, which we've got an oil analysis right here, but we did an oil analysis on all of the 0W20s as well. The AC Delco, I ran this prior and I have the oil analysis on the DuramaxNews.com website where I have a breakdown of a whole bunch of oil analysis. Now in this video, we're going to talk about AMSOIL, Hot Shots, and the Mobile One. As a bonus, I have a viewer actually sent me in two oil samples of their Schaefer's engine oil and we're going to do some comparisons with that to my findings. Now let's get into it. First off, I wanna talk about the Hot Shots secret. Now, this is where I started off with running the oil analysis, and right off the bat, I had high iron reading at 47, which in comparisons to other oil analysis that I've run before, that wasn't like extremely high. However, it was of concern. My aluminum sitting at three and copper sitting at seven. Those are average numbers, but still a little something I'm paying attention to. The viscosity came in at 9.4, which is actually among the thicker of the 0W20 oils. I would like to do a disclaimer that I did not do any kind of flushes or anything. I just drained the oil and then I went to the next product of oil. Now, technically that's a no-no because you are possibly mixing engine oils and you're not going to get a 100% perfect oil sample oil analysis afterwards. It's going to take multiple flushes. I did not do that. The Amsoil, this is a, a fan favorite, that's for sure. Now, when I was running this, I noticed my iron spiked all the way up to 59, which was very, very concerning. And among that, the viscosity stayed at 8.6, which the viscosity was good. The base number was the lowest, sitting at 2.31. We got a little bit of ugliness showing up for this Amsoil oil sample, but the next one that we tried is even worse. Mobile one. Now I know I just said even worse and our iron numbers actually went down. The reason why even worse was mentioned in there is because our oxidation skyrocketed to 30. Now that could be attributed to the mixing of oils or it was just straight up breaking down. Either way, I'm not very happy with the mobile one zero W20 in the truck. However, one other thing to note is that this is the first time that we've noticed a fuel dilution of 2.8 which in my research, 3.4 is roughly the number where uh, it's acceptable. So we are still within acceptable. However, we went from less than two on every single analysis to 2.8. So we've got a little something going on in there and it may be causing the oxidation in the engine oil, unsure. I also wanna note that the Mobile One had the lowest viscosity at 100C, which that means the 0W20 oil that is already thin, this is the thinnest out of all. And now we get to the Pennzoil 5W30. Now this oil, I'm gonna just, spoiler alert, I got better results out of this. Now I ran this for 3,500 miles and then sent it out. And the reason being was I really was concerned about the fuel dilution, so I needed to see that. And also I wanted to see if my wear metals were actually showing better or worse, as I didn't wanna hurt the engine at all. I mean, this is running thicker oil when it calls for 0W20 and we're running 5W30. So going to the oil analysis, we actually have the lowest iron that I have seen in all of my results. Aluminum was down, copper is down. Everything is looking really good. The viscosity is up at 11.0 centistokes, which is a little bit higher than our thickest 0W20, which was the Hot Shots engine oil. We can see the oxidation is at a controlled number. The Pennzoil 5W30 showed to be performing very well. So I went ahead and did another oil change and I'm currently running that in the truck right now. So I believe that that is a positive result because I do have the results to show that the 5W30 was a plus, especially in the iron, and that's shown in other oil samples that I have, again, on my DuramaxNews.com website. I'm gonna link that article in there so you can see all of the oil analysis that I gathered and compared quite a bit ago. But let's get into the Schaefer's. Now, you can see that they provided two different oil samples, and we've got roughly 5,000 miles in between each. You can see the iron numbers on the very first one was sitting at 48 and then 38, so it dropped down in comparison to my iron readings of 26 with the 5W30. I also wanna point out that 
This note here says you might want to consider trying a 5W30 if they have the same chemistry in a 5W30 to see if that lowers the wear rate. So even Speed Diagnostics, who is the motor oil geek, and this is who I'm going to go to in the future. I have one more oil analysis that I'm going to do through oil analyzers, but we're going to go to the motor oil geek because the knowledge that he has is just nobody can compare to it. So I've learned a lot from that. And that's why I felt comfortable with running 5W30 in my truck. As you know, I will always recommend what the manufacturer tells you to run. But in my own personal use, I am running 5W30. And I did do everything that I felt I needed to do. I tested the 0W20 first and I got my results and I got some unhappy numbers on there. And then I went to the 5W30 ran the results and I've got some happy numbers on there. We're gonna do one more oil analysis. Like I said, it's gonna be another 5,000 miles and then we're gonna see what this pens oil is. But going back into the shapers, like I said, the speed diagnostics report here, his copper is at 12 and uh, 11 right there, which in comparison, my copper numbers were all lower right there. So I don't know if those are too high or if they're just basically sitting on the averages, but the copper numbers, that's a little bit concerning the iron numbers. I feel like are a little bit higher than average, but again, nothing to really worry about. But I just wanted to share the Schaefer's oil analysis results. Um, I want to say thanks to Carl for sharing that with me. And uh, hopefully you guys learned something from this. I'm not going to tell you what to run. I'm not going to tell you what not to run. But hopefully this video helps you make that decision.